A few moments later. What's up? No. Ricky Bobby. I grew up in a pretty good sized town. High school grades always have between 800 and 1,000 students. The town was about 45 minutes to an hour from the second biggest city in our state, which is known for three rivers and many bridges. I have two older brothers, which means obviously I'm the youngest of three boys. Our mother was the general manager at our grandpa's golf course, and our father was in the state police, a lieutenant at the time this all happened. Cop dad could be hard on us, but all three of us learned to always be respectful, no matter what, unless extreme situations called for us not be. I will say that due to a very dark history, I've never had a close relationship with my brothers or parents. Even with all that, I'll also admit that this made my dad and I slightly closer, if only for a short period of time. When I was 15, I went to the downtown area, getting food and ice cream with my friends at a place about a half mile from the high school football stadium. Seeing as we were only 15, going into our 10th grade year of high school, we all rode our bikes to meet up. When we came back outside, I realized that my bike was missing. After my friends and I checked the immediate area, I called my dad, knowing that he was home from work. He drove down to where I was. We all figured that he'd be pissed at us, which actually he wasn't. All of my friends got on their bikes and headed off in different directions, all of them looking for my bike. As my dad and I were driving back to the part of town we lived in, we saw two males and one female walking down a side street. The group was pushing my bike as they walked, causing me to snap to attention and say aloud, They have my bike! My dad stopped immediately and put the car into park. We jumped out, and I laughed inside due to seeing my dad go from regular guy to cop dad. Well, he had the girl and one guy stand up against the wall with their faces touching it, and he slammed the guy with the bike to the ground. I grabbed the bike and put it in the bed of our truck. Since there were only two of us against three of them, my dad told me, get in the truck so they don't see your face. I said, screw that. It wasn't until years later that I came to regret that. Oh yeah? The cops came and arrested all three of them. Fast forward two and a half years. I was 18 and home from my freshman year of military college across the state. I was out jogging around 6 p.m. one night on the sidewalk next to the road when a car flew past me and sat at a stop sign until I passed. Oh no! Luckily, I was close to my home and memorized the car's details as much as I could. The vehicle started moving again, this time a lot slower, and I walked into my house just as they were passing by. Are you dead, ass? Are you dead? You gotta be, man. I figured that they'd just see me jogging and slowed down as a result. What? Nothing unusual. Yes, it is. Fast forward one week. Nothing unusual? He, they waited at the stop sign until you got close enough to the stop sign. When in reality, when you stop at a stop sign, unless you see, unless it's like other cars coming or other cars stopped at the, like, you know, the intersection. You stop at a stop sign for like at my, probably like to five seconds. At least that's for me. You know, I, I go to the stop sign, I look around, and then I go like, I'm not like, I'm not waiting no thirty seconds at a stop sign. At that stop sign, that's not a, all right. I just finished up another jog. I walked into the house through the front door, which leads right into the kitchen. A kitchen that had a big window overlooking the driveway, front yard, street, and stop sign. As soon as I walked to the sink by the window to splash some cold water on my face, I heard a loud bang from outside. Jesus. It sounded like an M80 exploding. Then one second of silence, followed by three loud booms in quick succession, which, thanks to being a hunter, I knew was gunfire. I dropped down, crawled to the door, 
grabbed the baseball bat my brothers and I sometimes used okay. and ran outside. I knew a bat had 0% chance of winning against a firearm, but I was hoping I'd surprise them. When I got outside, they were driving away, and I recognized the vehicle from a week earlier. It was the same one that had sat at the stop sign when I was jogging. Thankfully, no one was at home at the time, or who knows where they would have been standing when this happened. On screen are photos of my childhood home, showing where some of the bullets hit. After the police came and I'd given my statement, we waited. Like I said, the town was big, but it was also small enough that a lot of people knew each other. The town's police and my brothers all joked with me, asking me things like, did you try and be a hero when no one else was around? Or would ask if I was crazy due to running outside towards gunfire while only holding a bat. Well, two or three days passed before we received the call from the cops, saying that they'd caught the guy who shot at my house. As it turns out, it was the same guy who stole my bike two and a half years earlier. I could have told you that. After finding that out, my dad and I looked at each other without saying anything. He'd seen me finish up my jog and walk into the house by pure chance. The guy received 10 years for attempted murder with a weapon, but didn't even serve the whole sentence. What? So we went on with our lives. I became an EMT during college, working on weekends, then finished school. When I was 26 years old, I stopped by my parents' house one day when I was in the area. I walked into the kitchen, and on the kitchen table was the town's newspaper. The front page read something along the lines of, Local woman missing, vehicle found abandoned and burned. I started reading the article, and almost immediately ripped the table off its frame with rage. The article said that the missing woman's boyfriend was the same guy who had stolen my bike and shot at my parents' house. He wasn't arrested or charged with any crime related to the missing woman. I left and went back to my apartment about an hour away. Even through all my rage, I was still paranoid that the guy was following me somehow. My parents left their house for a week to stay at my grandpa's house. Life went on from there. The guy who shot at my house is currently in prison on other charges not related to the slaying of his girlfriend. When I was a kid, I went to a friend's house for a sleepover. It was an extremely hot day in the middle of the summer break, 2001. My friends and I were around 12 or so at the time, and we'd all been eagerly awaiting this night. There were four of us staying over in total, a pretty nice sized event. We watched movies, ate inordinate amounts of junk food, played N64 games, the works. At around 11 p.m., my friend's parents told us it was time for lights out. But of course, we all secretly stayed up longer, keeping our voices low and the sound on the TV muted. We were playing the original Super Smash Brothers. Hey, let's but the go. Of us were having a tournament. The whole time, though. I told you to go to bed. And you didn't. You didn't listen. Y'all secretly did what I wanted to do. I grab an Adidas belt. Bring me that ass. What the 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 We agreed that whoever won the tournament could sleep in my friend's bed, while the rest of us had to sleep in sleeping bags on the floor. Catch was, whoever came in last had to sleep in the creepy spare bedroom on the first floor, my all ass. by themselves. For us, the stakes were high. That spare bedroom was on the other side of the house, down this horrible, pitch black hallway. God damn. It had this eerie vibe to it, a sort of ghostly vibe, the stereotypical haunted room that terrifies a young mind. There was even a family rumor that one of the previous tenants had died in that room. Chilling stuff. Not wanting to lose the tournament, I picked the character I was best with, Captain Falcon. We drew lots to see who'd face off against two, and it all culminated in a free-for-all match that was worth extra points. Luckily for me, I was able to falcon kick and punch my way to victory. Our friend Jamie came in last. Unfortunately for him, he now had to make the walk down the dark hallway alone and sleep in the supposedly haunted bedroom. 
he begged us not to make him go. But being young boys, we all told him that a deal's a deal, and that if he didn't go, he'd never live it down. He reluctantly scooped up his sleeping bag, quietly snuck out of my friend's bedroom, and nervously creep through the hallway. So the mom just didn't want to put like lights in the hallway, or what? The f what happened? What's going on? Cause that's very specific. Like, how do you not? How do you put lights in all other rooms in all other parts of the ho of the house except that hallway? She ain't cahoots. Until he got to the spare bedroom door. He slowly twisted the handle, entered, and closed the door behind him. That's the last any of us ever saw of Jamie. Oh no! The next morning, when we went to check on him, we found the room completely empty, the window wide open. We told the adults that Jamie was gone, and they in turn called the police. According to them, the most likely scenario was that because it was a hot night, Jamie opened the window before going to sleep. At some point after that, someone came in through the open window and took him. Nobody else heard a thing, and none of the other neighbors saw anything either. To this day, we don't know what happened to Jamie, and I'm still waiting for updates. Looking back, I of course wish we hadn't made him go. I wish we'd made a different forfeit. If we were young, it was an innocent dare, and there's no way any of us could have foreseen what was going to happen. But well, still, that's Cap. If one of y'all had him on Adidas, y'all would have foreseen the future. Y'all had a premonition. So, that's on y'all. Well, I can't help but feel in some way responsible. You are? What? I think about Jamie often, even to this day. Oh, well, yeah. He was a good kid, a good friend, and didn't deserve whatever happened to him. You sure? I think he deserved it, to be honest. I was traveling around Australia during my gap year at the time. It had always been a dream of mine to rent a camper van and drive the length and breadth of Gold Coast Road, then head on down to Melbourne and back up to Adelaide. I was by myself trying to fulfill that dream, and in spite of traveling solo, I never felt lonely. That's because I met a lot of fun people along the way. Each day was an adventure, and each night was a new party with new faces. Single serving friends, as they said in Bike Club. House for one evening, and then you never see them again. But of all the people I met on that trip, two stick out like a sore thumb in my mind. It was during one of my final nights in the country. I was close to Adelaide at this point, and had just met a couple of guys called Dave and Jacko. They seemed like fun people, friendly and up for a good time. I spent the evening with them, drinking a few brews under the stars. As the evening drew to a close, I wished them both well, and said that if we didn't meet again, I hoped they'd both have nice lives. Since I was living out of my camper van to save money, I was sleeping in there too, so I hopped inside my vehicle, a little dizzy from the night's beverages, and fell asleep in the back almost immediately. I woke up in the middle of the night to rumbling, and the sound of tires on dirt. My van's engine was roaring. Whilst I was sleeping in the back, what? someone had got their hands on my keys oh my and were now driving my vehicle to God knows where, with me still in the back. I started shouting, Hey, stop! But all I heard in reply was a laughter and hollering. It was a sound I'd heard earlier when I'd made Jacko laugh. Now I knew who was driving me. Question was, where was Jacko taking me? Looking out the window, I could see that there was another car Jesus. following ours. Behind the wheel was the other guy, Dave. What were these guys up to? I didn't want to find out, so I took out my phone to call for help. No signal. That's because we were long gone from civilization by that point. We were in the outback. Outback stay Because of the partition between the front and rear of the van, I couldn't see or get to Jacko. I couldn't jump out of the back of the van either, given the speed at which we were moving. The fact that Dave was right behind us and the fact that we were in the middle of nowhere. So I tried reasoning with Jacko, shouting for him to pull over. He ignored me. I don't know how long I was in the back wall before I woke up, how long this madman had been driving me, but eventually we came to a stop. Looking out the window, 
All I could see was desolation. Nothing for miles in any direction. Ah, damn. The real Australian outback. Jacko jumped out of the vehicle and hopped into Dave's car. The pair of them circled my van, kicking up dust all around. I could hear them laughing and taunting me, saying things like, Yeah, mate, have a nice life, as they drove off back the way that they had come and disappeared from my view. It's infamously perilous to travel into the outback. Without shade or supplies, most people don't last a day. So, a uh, question. He said, here man, have a nice life. They circle the RV hella times. And then you said, like, have a nice life. So, I used to think, like, did they, is it a bomb? Like, in the, in the RV? Like, what? I don't trust that. The sun was rising, and it was set to be a scorching day. I was dehydrated from the night before, and there was only one small bottle of water in the back of the van. The van itself was almost out of gas. I had no phone signal. If I couldn't get a hold of anyone, I was dead. I had two choices. Sit in my vehicle and make use of the weak air conditioning while I could, or hop out and walk in a random direction in hopes of finding help, though who knew how far away that might be. In the end, I chose the former. I was stuck out there for 20 hours before Damn. a helicopter overhead just so happened to spot my van stranded in the middle of the outback. I was unconscious when the rescuers found me. I was later told how lucky I was. Drinking my water quickly instead of sipping it, not exerting myself, and making use of the AC are what likely saved me. Well, that and pure luck. After leaving the hospital, I was on the next flight home, but made sure to give a full and detailed description of the two blokes that did this to me. Even so, to my knowledge, Jacko and Dave were never found. I often wonder if they ever did this to anyone else. Doesn't seem like the kind of thing you just do once. The way they were laughing and taunting me, it was clear they had a taste for it. Whenever I read about people losing their lives in the outback, I think back to that encounter and wonder if Dave and Jacko had something to do with it. You think? Man, I, I don't mind meeting new people, but then I always have my guard up, no matter what. Cause I, 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 I don't got time for the clock shit. I never do, and I never will. So if you want to meet new people, by all means, meet new people. But at least know, at least protect yourself, at least have your guard up. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't be, you can't be too too careful out here. You can't be too cautious. Just it's it's a dangerous world out here, and yet it's a beautiful world. Right here. But it's not dangerous all the time. You know, just ninety nine percent of the time. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.